Hi everyone, it's Jim the IO Tesla guy. Welcome back to the channel. This is my wife's two week old Model Y 2022 brand new midnight silver metallic. It's got about 300 miles on it. And one of the first things that a lot of Tesla owners do is they say, I gotta put PPF on the car. And PPF isn't cheap. It can run from $2,000 up to $8,000 or even all over the place, depending on what part of the country you're in. And is this what we should do for this car? Well, right over here is my 2021 early model, almost two year old red model Y that has about almost 35,000 miles. And for those of you that have been following my channel have seen this car quite a bit, but something that I haven't talked about is PPF paint protection film on this car. Do I have it? Do I not have it? Car looks pretty good. What do you think? Well, the answer is, is I don't have any PPF on this car or this car yet. And I'm trying to figure out if that's something that I want to do. So I want to show you what 35,000 miles looks like from road wear and tear. And the car has been pummeled with all of the natural and normal debris that you might have doing road trips and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do my best to take you through all of the subtle, small defects that I have with this car, the good, the bad, and the ugly that I've had over the last 35,000 miles with no PPF. And you can decide for yourself if you want to get PPF on your own. So let's get into it. Part of the car that's going to take the biggest beating is going to be the front of the car. And the Teslas have a particular shape that they attract just about anything that's thrown at them. And any of you that have had a Tesla and have gone on a road trip know that the front end is an absolute bug magnet. And if bugs are hitting it, so is pretty much everything else. And I want to actually show you, and it might be difficult to film here, what you get after 35,000 miles no PPF on the front of your car. I'm gonna do my best to try to capture it on camera because there are some problems. Now let's get up and personal on this car and I'm gonna start zooming in and you're gonna start seeing little things like this here and there. Some of it's dust, some of it isn't. They are little bitty rock chips that you can see which is actually rather tip difficult and they're actually pretty small. You can use my finger as reference here. And I would say that on the hood, there are probably, I don't know, there's probably more than I think, probably 20 to 30 little dinky little rock chips. And it's hard to tell just on normal wear and tear. You can see that I'm wiping away some of these things and they actually aren't the rock chips. So from a daily use, it's hard to actually see what's a defect and what's just something on my car. And I've done the best I can with washing this car. I have hand washed it using a two bucket method ever since I had got the car. And I've only a couple of times had to take it to a commercial wash system where I did a hand spray of the car. It's never been to an automated touchless wash or even a brushed wash system. And from what you can see here, um, the paint is not perfect. It does have the swirl marks that you can see, but I have to admit they only show up when they're under direct bright sunlight. I don't see them normally. Another thing that you're going to see on this car in a couple of places are these. These are just general, very light surface scratch marks. Something that was kicked up from the road that ended up putting a little scratch on the car here and there. The biggest defect that I have in this car after 35,000 miles, aside from the little swirls and the light scratches and some of the paint chips on the hood, is right down here on the front of the bumper. It's right there. See, during one of my last road trips out to Colorado, something hit the front of the car and took out a nice big gouge 
out of the front of this bumper. And if I had PPF, this is a big enough gouge. I don't know that it would have protected it because it's relatively deep. I haven't done anything to repair it yet. I don't have to worry about it rusting because the front of this thing is plastic, but it is something that I do want to take care of eventually. Now, I kind of told a little white lie when I said that my car doesn't have PPF because those of you that have followed my channel for a long time know that I did spend the $50 to put PPF on this back panel. It's a kit that comes from Tesla. And I did have about 10,000 miles on the car and I also did not have front mud flaps before they were even offered. And I got a lot of debris kicked up on this corner panel because of a light peppering. I have a whole separate video on that. Um, but I did put a little bit on this, this corner panel back here. Um, on, I guess it's on the back door. And it has completely taken care of the problem. And I highly recommend using some sort of mud flap on the Model Y aftermarket or the one that comes from Tesla. On my new Model Y, it didn't even leave the parking lot before mud flaps got put on that car. Now there's no sense me showing you any more defects on the outside of this car because I don't have PPF because frankly, there aren't any. Other than what's on the hood and the front of the car, there is literally nothing wrong that I can find with the rest of the car, whether it be on the sides or on the back. It all looks basically brand new after 35,000 miles. So this is my car. This is my car after 35,000 miles no PPF. Do I need it? Well, it kind of comes down to personal preference and taste. How susceptible are you to noticing those little bitty things that happen with your car? How much does that mean to you? Well, for me, this is a daily driver. It's been through two Iowa winners. It's a car and I love this car, but it's still a car. It is still a utilitarian vehicle for me. I got to deal with it every single day. Would I have liked to have PPF on it if it didn't cost anything? 100% absolutely would have gone with the PPF. However, given that PPF in this area tends to run between four and $6,000, do I regret not spending $6,000? No, I don't. I think given my personal taste, and how well this car is held up, I am happy that I didn't get PPF right away or even now. I'm okay with it, I really am. So what am I gonna do on my new car? Well, we're not gonna get PPF on that car, but we are looking to do a complete color change wrap, which is a whole nother story that I will cover in a later video. So is PPF right for you? That's something you gotta decide for yourself. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you have an idea of how well Tesla paint without PPF holds up after 35,000 miles. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like. Subscribe would be even better. So until the next video, enjoy your Tesla.